Hello, we're back to doodling with noodles again. Here I am with my bowl of absolutely delicious marmalade noodles. I just think that these look like marmalade and I'm a big marmalade fan, I have to say. So uh, noodles are one and a half inch wide strips. They're quite long. They're pretty much the full length of the fabric. And uh, my experience of noodles when you're actually eating real noodles is that they're quite long. So these ones are just the width of the fabric. They can, of course, be different lengths and things. We can use short noodles. We can use all sorts of noodles. But these ones are one and a half inches wide, and I've cut them the width of the fabric. So that's how long they are, somewhere in the region of 42 inches. Um, so today I'm just going to show you how to make a fun block. It's a little bit different. We're going to have a go at some Seminole-style patchwork, which is sometimes uh, looking a little bit like this, although perhaps not traditional colours that I'm using today. Um, so the Seminole is is where you, you kind of make this panel of um, squares on point to make your colour things, and you can do all sorts of decorative things with that. And I'm going to show you how to do that today and make a block like this. This is just a block that I've created, and I thought it just looked quite delicious and summery today. So I've already prepared my noodles. Um, I have a panel here of seven different noodles. I've started with my darker orange in the middle, and then to that nice goldeny yellow-orange colour either side of that, and then a paler yellow either side of that, and then out to the cream, which will be my background. And so I've got a total of seven noodles there all together. I've just joined them together with my quarter inch seam allowance and I pressed all the seams in one direction which is kind of the easiest way to do it when you're doing the Seminole style patchwork. So I'll show you how how we get started on that. We'll do this um, little bit of uh, cutting first. So I'm going to lay my noodles up with my board and just be aware that when you're sewing long strips like this together, they can warp a little bit, so you just have to be a little bit aware of that when you're sewing and ironing to try and keep everything as straight as possible. So I'm just going to trim off my selvages on the end here, and then I'm going to slide along on using my board to help me with the measurements one and a half inches. I want my, my little squares are going to finish up one inch square, so I need uh, my to cut my strips one and a half inches to allow for the seam allowance. So I'm just going to cut, and, and I need six, to make this block that I'm doing, I need six of these strips. So we'll just cut along here to make the six. I think doodling is so much fun, especially with noodles. Okay, so I don't need this anymore at the moment. And now we've got these little strips, and you can see that if we lay them so that they just offset one square each time, you end up with this very nice little pattern. Um, and this is um, this method is called Seminole Patchwork. Not something I'm very familiar with all the history on, so I won't say too much on it. I just know that I think it looks very attractive. So I'm just going to show you now how we sew those. And because we've sewn, pressed them with all the seams going in the one direction, we're going to top and tail the, the seams, so every second row you want to turn around so that your seams are going the other way on every second row. And this will help you with the piecing because it will allow you to nestle those seams in together so that they fit nice and snug. So I want to be able to achieve what I've done here, I need to be able to offset my pieces. So if we were starting down on this row, back to front I know to how I've laid it out, you wouldn't sew them back together exactly the same. You're going to slide it along one square so that you start one in. And I'm just going to snuggle that seam right in against that one and you can feel when it gets there because we've alternated the, the direction of those seams. And then they will all, all match as you go along and I'm just going to go to the sewing machine now and just using my regular quarter inch seam, I'm going to sew along there. And as you get to each seam, just make sure that it's nestling quite nicely in against itself. So I can feel that that seems nice and flat and I'll just check as I go that they're all going to be doing that. So the idea of this doodling with noodles is to encourage people to have a little think about 
things, have a little play with things. Fabric's a very exciting medium to work in. There's so much choice out there. There's so much you can do to fabric to change it yourself. And uh, this is just one of those ways. I just, I like the size of this one and a half inch strip. So now I'm ready to do my second one. So again, I slide it along that one, just the same as we did the first time. And uh, then I'll go back to the sewing machine. And again, the seams are going in opposite directions so that they'll snuggle in together. I've made a marmalade quilt before, so this is going to be quite exciting. Okay, we're just going to quickly continue on and sew the next three on as well. Just the same thing, each time you offset that by one square and you get this little zigzaggy edge forming, which is going to get trimmed off at some stage, but not yet. So when you're doing something like this, it ends up with your fabric um, on the little squares, what they call on point when they're on the diagonal like that. Um, and it does make for other situations. It's hard to gauge exactly the size that your block is going to be unless you're a real mathematician, which I have to say I'm not. Okay, that's the fourth one on. There are some um, guides out there and things about the maths. If you're interested in the maths of things, it's possible to find these things out. I tend to make something, have a look at it and measure it and think, well, that must be the size it's going to be. Sometimes I ask somebody about the maths and I get all these technical terms thrown at me. And then I think, oh, I think I'll just go back and sew it and measure it. <laughs> that will work for me. So one more strip to go on. It's looking pretty good. So just offset again. If you just keep working along the strip and offsetting the same each time, you'll find that it comes together really well. Again, I'm going to press them all in one direction. So I'm going to start with my first row, lay it down, just holding that up and just pressing across. Now you'll find that this little bit at the end here wants to flatten out and it doesn't really matter because actually that little bit is probably going to get trimmed off. If you can just press it so that the seam part is flat and beyond that doesn't actually matter too much. The second one and the third one, just keep coming along getting your seams nice and flat because we were able to alternate the direction of the seams and snuggle them in one against the other you get a really nice matching of the points when you're doing something like this so it makes for an accuracy that kind of just happens so there I've got a nice strip of course if you were wanting to you could make great long strips you can use this technique on clothing on bags in quilts, all sorts of places. Um, nice borders on towels I've seen. There's a variety of things you can do. So now I just, because I'm wanting to use it as a rectangle block, um, I'm, I need some corners and I've worked out that you can use half of a five inch square. So I've got some five inch squares here. Um, I can quickly cut them to show you. Just the diagonal. So I just lay it on my board, helps me line it up, although you don't really need to. You just need to go through the two diagonal points of your square and cut that in half and I've cut two there so I've got some squares here so I'm going to pop one on each end and then we're going to trim the block down to the right size 
Um, it's very, as I said, it's quite hard to work out an exact size, so it's going to be an unusual shaped uh, sized block. Um, but when you when you're working out a quilt, you can kind of work with that as long as you know somewhere to start with. So if you make your block, know what size it is, you can work other things to go with it. Now, if I'm going to position this um, on this fabric uh, to get it where I want it, because we're going to be trimming down afterwards, if you if you pop, finger press a little fold in the center of that longer line, the diagonal line of your triangle, and we're going to place it face down, but you want to pop that to the right, as you look at it, to the right hand side of your darker center square there, so that you can see this is popping over into the white here and it's extending a little bit along at this end. And we're just going to sew that on there. That's going to then flip over and we're going to be able to trim that down along the sides because you're going to be trimming off these little points on the sides. So at this end you can see that point should be lining up with this line if it was continuing on through. So I'll just go to the machine and do my quarter inch seam allowance. So this is a, possibly a little bit more complicated um, than some of the other noodles, but I just thought it was a really good opportunity to have a little go at doing something like this. And the noodles are such a good size for this sort of thing. Okay, and I'll just quickly pop the other one on the other end and then we'll press them both at the same time. So same thing again, find your centre with the long diagonal line. Just be aware that that is also on the bias. That could be stretchy. Try not to stretch it. Just let it sit um, where it wants to on there. It should just extend a little bit at that end and beyond a little bit at that end. many seams sitting underneath it's going to be easier if we press that over and let the many seamed seams sit flat and the same at the other end as well so what we're hoping to achieve when we pop these triangles on is that your seam extends a quarter of an inch beyond this point here because we're going to be trimming off at that quarter of an inch because you, your next seam when you join this block into something is going to come through that point there so you need enough fabric for that to sit there and the same of course on this side as well so now I'm going to trim these blocks now the trimming of them is a little bit tricky I've worked out that it's pretty much four and three quarters wide but it could be just slightly less and um, as I said when things are on the point it's not an exact size and I'm going to make them 13 inches long. So I might do the length first. So this is just slightly over 13. So I would trim that off at both ends. I'm using the markings on my board to help me here. Um, try and make sure everything is sitting as straight as you can so that you can get other things trimmed off. So you will perhaps have some funny little bits that, that really won't show in the longer term of things when you do these sorts of... Um, more adventurous style blocks, I guess you could call them. So I'm just going to trim off there, so it's now 13 inches long. And uh, I'm going to use that straight line at the bottom to position that now. And I'm going to use, so I've, I've got it sitting between two lines there. And if I lay this on here, so that on my ruler there's a line quarter of an inch in from the edge, which is very helpful, because I lay that right over these little points here so that the, the ruler sticks out a quarter of an inch beyond those points. So have a look at that and see where it's sitting and it's not sitting too badly. Um, sometimes you can wiggle things around just a little bit. Sometimes your fabric needs to be maneuvered just to make sure it's sitting quite straight so that they're all in a line and I think that looks pretty good. Still looking pretty good. It does want to slip a little bit, just be a little bit aware of that. Trim those away. Now, you can probably see that there's a couple of little V's in here. Well, I think they're going to be okay because we've still got plenty of 
seam allowance there. I wouldn't be worrying about those for my cross. So I'm just lining up my ruler here. And my ruler is four and a half inches wide and I'm expecting my block to be about four and three quarters. So it's looking pretty good at the moment. When I line, so I've got this edge lined up with the, um, with the, the uh, on a on a line, and then I've moved across four and three quarter inches from that line, where I'm now going to cut through and trim these points off. I've just made sure that my quarter inch line has lined up with the little points under there, and it's looking pretty good so far. I'll trim those away, and there I have a nice looking block. I'm really pleased with that, and. I'll just give you a couple of ideas now of how you might lay them out. I had a little bit of a play on my computer software and came up with this idea here where I put the blocks in a row and you kind of get this nice diagonal forming where the two corner squares are. And then I have just popped a strip of the plane between. Now there's probably lots of other possibilities, but this is um, one that I've come up with and I'll just quickly show you how that might look with these few blocks that I've got here. So if I lay these out and I've cut some strips to go in between just so that we can get a bit of an idea of what it might look like. It's certainly slightly different colours to what I would normally use but I'm actually quite pleased with it. So just laying them run across. So I cut them the blocks to 13 inches by 4 and 3 quarters so we're going to end up with a 12 and a half inch long block by 4 and a quarter inch um, which is quite good, I think. I'm quite pleased with the way that is. So when I sit these in a row, you kind of get this nice sort of diagonal thing going on. Uh, just something a little bit different. A strip in between. Now you could, of course, make these long strips that go between, but I've uh, chosen to make them um, just the, the same size as the block at the moment. And then I would just continue on if I had more blocks and um, putting them like that. So this is going to be my marmalade quilt and I think that's a great way to use marmalade flavoured noodles and hope you have some fun in enjoying playing with your noodles as well. Thank you.